Greetings and welcome, my name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this tutorial I'm going to be covering the advanced collisions that Game Maker Studio has provided for us. So, we did simple collisions before, and what I want to do is do a brief note on physics collisions, because it is actually its own function that if you have a physics world, you need to be using this function. Game Maker says that they cannot guarantee that the other functions are actually going to work because of the way things interact within a physics world as opposed to a non-physics one. So that is the function you'll need to see. If you want to know more about that, then just let me know. I don't do much with physics world just yet, but I could look into that and help you out if you need it. The last thing is collisions checking without a mask. Now, if you don't have a mask on your sprite, then collision checking is a little more confusing. Uh, but this is actually related to putting like in a specific area. So they have an example of uh, like a rectangle. So you can draw a point on your game maker level and see is the player inside of it? Is the mouse click in here? You can see so you can define an area and then do a check for something inside of that specific area. But that is something that I don't really want to cover much. What I want to focus on here is advanced collision checking. So let me show you what we're going to be creating in this tutorial. Uh, I have Sarah right here. And again, we have this tree right here that we can move behind. But you can see here that there is a white circle. And that is the collision that I'm actually drawing for debugging purposes. And this white line protruding from Sarah is a collision line that when we come over this in the debugger, it's actually showing me the object index that it is. The same thing for the sign. I can come up to it and we can't see it right now, but we'll get to that. And it shows me which object index. And you can also see here this statue is looking around. That collision line is moving. And if we were to enter it, it would show a debug message. And you could also do something like, you know, spawn an enemy or fire a bolt from it. If that was like a camera uh, or an enemy that was looking around like a guard sentry unit. These are some of the advanced things that you can do with the collision. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So we've got this, and the functions that they provide for the advanced are right here. You can create a circle, an ellipse, a line, a point, or a rectangle. Basically, advanced collision making is if you want to do something beyond the mask of your sprite. Because the sprites have their own collision masks, which is what the simple collision checks. But if you want to make a circle, or put out a line, or do something beyond the simple bounding boxes that they provide, these are the functions that you will use. So we are going to be looking at the collision line and the collision circle. Now inside of here, they have a really good visual demonstration of this. You can create a circle around an object, and then you see what is colliding with it. Now, the way that these work, for the most part, is that they take the same arguments and then give you this, the same return. So it has an object that you specify to look for. You can also use the keyword all if you want it to just be anything that it collides with, let me know and let's do something about that. And then you say whether it is precise. Most of the time you don't want it to be precise because it uses more CPU power, which can make your game run slower. If everything was precise and you had a bunch of objects, your game might slow to a crawl. So you got to be careful using precise. And the last one is not me, which can be a little confusing at first. But basically, if you had multiple instances of the same object, do you want the object that is running this collision function to ignore the, that same object of itself? Like if you had multiple NPCs that were the same, do you want them to be able to collide with each other and do something or just ignore them? And then last, it returns the ID that it runs into. Now this is important because what it returns is one ID of who it runs into. If you are running into several, like in this picture right here, it is going to randomly choose one of these four balls to return its ID to you. And you do not know which one it's going to be because it is random. So if you need to know precise collision checking for something, you definitely want to set it up to be a much smaller and precise circle so that you know exactly which object you are going to get. So with that information, let's go ahead and jump in and I'm going to show you how to do this. So I already have the sprites here and I will provide this as a starting project for you that you can download. That way you don't have to create your own or you can just do it on your own if you're an artist. So I have a signpost, a tree, and a statue which we are going to create objects for. 
Now we're going to do this just one at a time. So the first one we're going to do is create this statue. We're going to right click, create an object, OBJ statue. And we're going to add a create event because what I want to do here is put in a couple of variables. We're going to do looking at is equal to zero and a variable called time to change is, uh, is going to equal false. Now these are things we're going to do because you saw that moving line and this is how we're going to set up that century length like object. So first we're going to go into step. We're going to create a step event and all we're going to do is create a collision line. Say if collision line x, y, so we say where it starts and then we're going to say where it ends at and we're going to say this collision line is x minus 400 so it's going to go far to the left. And then we're going to put y plus looking at. So that is going to be able to change the y of the second coordinate so it's actually moving up and down. And we're going to be looking for object Sarah specifically. We don't want it to be precise and we don't want it to be looking for ourselves. Which is all good and dandy. So with that, I pressed print screen there, that was awkward. We got that, and now all we want to do is show debug message. I can see you. And obviously, you can do a lot more than show messages, but this is the way that if you, you run into this collision line, this is where you would put your function or your script, or you would call or create anything you wanted to if they were seen by a sentry or if they run into a collision line. Now, the way that we make this change is through E, the alarm. So we're going to say if it's not time to change, we're going to do looking at plus equal to one. And while that is increasing looking at, we're going to say if it gets to 200, then we are just going to change this variable time to change equals true. And we're going to put an else here so that it will then decrement that looking at variable. Looking at might is equal one. And if looking at is equal to zero, time to change will be false. So that is going to create the line, but what I want to show you is how to actually debug this because the, sometimes the collisions don't always work what you want because the coordinates are off or they're not looking the direction you think. So the way you actually can debug this is in this draw event, we're going to go to draw, and the first thing you have to do is draw self because if you don't draw yourself, then it's not going to draw anything. So I'm going to first come over here and assign that the statue and make it solid. And then I'm going to draw line because the collision line function that we're using is literally just a line and we told it exactly where we wanted it to be so we can actually copy these coordinates exactly, go over to draw and paste them in because that is going to draw the line that the collision is actually creating itself. So if we come into this room and we throw in this statue We'll make it a little bit larger and we run it, it will now show a collision line that it is detecting. And if I run into it, you can see down here in this output window, it is seeing me. So that collision line is working properly. We can see how it works. Now the drawing is obviously just for debugging. If you wanted to uh, actually show the visual line, this is one way you could do it, but there's probably better sprites or better imagery that you could draw for this. This I'm just showing you is how it debugs. Now, let me show you this really quick. You, We typed in the X and Y coordinates for where it to start, and so I chose this uh, origin actually on its eyes so that it looks like it's scanning with its eyes. If you wanted to do a middle origin here, you would just need to adjust uh, the X and Y coordinates on the drawing of, the, of it. So you just do like uh, X minus 10 and Y minus five or something like that to put it at its eyes. That's why it's starting from there and not from its center like it usually does for objects. Okay, that's the statue out of the way. I think that's a very useful and practical thing so hopefully that will be useful in your games. But now I wanna show you probably the most useful thing that you can do which is using a collision line on your character to be able to tell what's in front of them. 
So we're going to open up Sarah, and we are going to go into her step event. And inside of here, you can see that this is from the simple collision. We have all of this right here, so we know when she's moving, where she's going, and she's not going to be able to collide with anything because we still have this place free on there. But what we want to do is actually set up a couple of variables so that when she's walking in a specific direction, we know which way the collision line should be facing. So I'm going to create a collided enemy. We're going to set this to undefined, which is a keyword that Game Maker has set up to basically be a null. And we're going to set up my direction. And we're going to set this as zero to start. Now inside of the step event, we're going to do D first. So we're going to say that the collided enemy variable that we set up is equal to the collision line. And this is why it needs to be inside of each key, because the collision line is going to change depending on which direction that we are actually facing. So if we're facing the right, it's going to be x, y, and then x plus 50, y. And I'm going to put all here. If we wanted to look for just one object, we could do that. Like if we just wanted to look at trees or statues or signposts, this is something you could do. And that is perfectly fine. I, however, I'm going to put all here because I want to be able to tell the ID of any object that we are looking at. And we're going to put false and true. And then I'm going to put my direction is equal to 90. Now, my direction is an extra variable which we have to use because we are... We are altering the x and y coordinates of our character, not using the built-in variables. If we were using direction, which is a built-in variable, then we would actually know the direction that our character is facing. The way I'm doing this is 0 is straight up, 90 is to the right, 180 is down, and 270 is to the left. So we're going to do this again. Collided enemy equals collision line x, y. This time it's going to be x minus 50, y, all false, true, once again. And my direction here, oof, can't type, is going to be 270 because we're actually looking on the left this time. So I'm going to copy this and paste it now that we know how it's working. And so we just need to make sure we change this properly. So this is no longer going to change here, but we want the y coordinate because we're looking up. We want it to be y minus 50 and the direction to be 0. We're going to paste it one more time to S, change the X minus, and do a Y plus 50, and my direction equal to 180. And then we're going to come down here, and we're going to add in um, another show debug message so that we can see exactly what we're colliding with. And all we need to do is show the collided enemy. With that, it'll show the ID of every object that we run into that has a solid mark. And what I want to do for debugging is come into draw. And we are going to first draw self, because you have to. And then we're going to put if my direction is equal to zero, then we're going to draw a line equal to what it would be if we were looking up. So that would be x, y, x, and then y minus 50, because we are looking up with the w key. So we'll go ahead and copy this three more times. We'll change this to 90, 180, and 270, and then change these ones respectively. So if we're looking to the right, we aren't going to be changing the y value. Instead, we want to be looking to x plus 50. And then 180, we're looking down. So this will be y plus 50. And this one is going to be y, x minus 50 with deleting the y part here. OK, now let's go ahead and run this. And Sarah will show her collision line. And we'll actually be able to see it depending on which way she's looking. So you can see here that now we have a collision line. And if we come up to here. 1,000 or uh, 100,001, I think it is. So that is the ID of the statue that we are hitting. 
Otherwise, it is negative four, which is no one. So you can see here that the collision line, we can debug and actually show where it should be and get this idea. And this is the most useful thing because when you have this line directly in front of the player, you can then say, well, if they, are, if they are in front of a barrel, let them push it. If they're in front of a potion and they press spacebar, pick it up and add it to their inventory. You know, it opens up all of these possibilities that you know what's right in front of the player and you can set up a series of if statements so that it will work perfectly based on what you want them to be able to do. Now, the last thing is really just showing the signpost and the tree. So we're just gonna make a quick object for each of those. So obj tree, set that as solid, and we'll give it a sprite. And we'll go ahead and do this, obj signpost, set it as solid, and give it that. We'll open up our room and throw both of these in there. And let's go ahead and run this. Now, I'm not going to take the time to recode the tree so that it turns invisible. I just want to show you that now, if we look at this, we can see exactly which objects is in front of us. And like a signpost, you could say, I don't know, if they're facing a signpost and they press spacebar, show them a sign. You know, start the dialogue. So, those are the advanced collisions that are very useful and that I use in my own games, and I'm hoping that you will find a use for as well. But that is all I've got for you. If you want to see anything more, leave a comment below, hit me up on Twitter. Let me know what tutorials you would like me to make and what information you want to know. But as always, have fun making great games and I will talk to you later. Hey there. Uh, I've got a Patreon, if you didn't know. If you'd like to support me, that would be great. Up on the screen are the people who are pledging enough to get their name in the credits. They are helping fund this YouTube channel, which is awesome. I just want to give a shout out to them and all that they do to help me do this. It's great. If you would like to join, uh, you can click on the link at the end of the video or in the description below. Thank you. Thank you.